Hey, 15 Minutes with Fuzz listeners. I feel like a comedian at the beginning of a comedy podcast because I'm about to tell you where you can come see me perform live on stage. Pretty cool, huh? Join me Thursday, April 13th at the Bend Theater in West Bend for the Volunteer Center of Washington County's annual Champions of Change event. I will be the MC again this year. Last year was a ton of fun. This year, tons more fun. Just not tons more fuzz. We'll be celebrating the awesome efforts of our fellow community members who are out there doing extraordinary things. At Champions of Change, we highlight individuals, groups, teams, local businesses, nonprofit organizations, and nonprofit professionals who are going above and beyond in our community to make it a great place for all of us to live. Tickets for Champions of Change are available right now through the Volunteer Center. Go to fuzz.cc slash change to purchase your tickets. That's fuzz.cc slash change, and that will take you right over to the Volunteer Center's website. Again, Champions of Change, that's Thursday, April 13th at The Bend. Doors open at 6.15 p.m. The event kicks off at 6.30. It'll be a great time, I promise. And again, go to fuzz.cc slash change to get your tickets and come hang out with me and tons of great volunteers. Hello, boys and girls, it's me, Fuzz, and this is a show affectionately called 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Why affectionately? Because it's rarely 15 minutes. It's usually either longer or shorter, but I like to play the average. Hope you're having a great spring. Spring actually just started yesterday as this show comes out, so that might be a little aggressive, but I hope the rest of your spring is great. I could really use a day of 65 degrees and sun for my mental health and sanity. However, I do like that it's still light out when I get home from work around 7 p.m. during the work week. Speaking of later hours, this week we're speaking with Washington County Clerk Ashley Reichert. It was recently announced that the Washington County Clerk's Office, along with the Register of Deeds and County Treasurer's Offices, will be open from 7 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday starting on April 3rd. And while I was exploring this topic, I also realized that not a lot of people know what a county or municipal clerk does. So with that, here are 15 minutes on what the heck does a county clerk do anyway with Washington County Clerk Ashley Reichert on 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Ashley, thanks for coming in today. So we're embarking on another spring election here in Wisconsin, and I thought it'd be fun to explore exactly what a county clerk does. Yep. And to be completely honest with you, Mm -hmm. your husband, Justin, who's your biggest publicist, (laughs) uh, told me that I should reach out to you and talk to you about the upcoming changes to the hours at the clerk's office. And we'll talk about that coming up. But first, let's learn about you. So how did you get started in local government? So I was a stay-at-home mom uh, until 2013, and actually at that point wanted to get back into the workforce. My youngest son at the time was about eight weeks old when I was looking for a new job, and I came across a position in the Planning and Parks Department for Washington County and decided to apply and ended up with an interview shortly after my application was received and received a job offer within, I think, the same day, which was kind of surprising. And at that point, I wasn't sure I wanted to work full-time. I was kind of thinking maybe part-time would have been more beneficial for me with a new little one at home, but it ended up working out just as it was supposed to, and everything happens for a reason. And I started shortly after in the Planning and Parks Department. So that's where my, my role in government began. Ended up working there for several years and then was recruited to work in the sheriff's office by the sheriff at the time, Dale Schmidt. And I ended up touring that facility and started there within a few weeks. And the rest is history. Shortly after being there, maybe less than a year, I decided to run for office and had a primary, was elected as county clerk in 2016 and began where I'm at now in 2017. Wow. All right. So did you ever think that you would be working in local government when you were younger? So this is a question that always makes me laugh because 
I mean, I've always had an interest in history, my family history, genealogy, history of the community, and politics as well. And when taking several either civics classes or history classes in high school, we were required to volunteer for our local government agencies. And I ended up in the clerk of court's office. And I remember filing paperwork at that time and thinking to myself, this is something I never want to do. (laughs) And actually, my intention was to become a marine biologist, which is totally opposite of what I'm doing now. But there's a plan for everybody. And that wasn't wasn't it for me. And I I truly love what I do now and am so grateful that I had the opportunity and it all worked out the way it did. My youngest daughter wants to be a marine biologist and she already has a University of Hawaii sweatshirt that she wears around <laughs> because that's where she's going Aww. and she's seven. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> well, my- maybe she'll end up working for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or maybe she'll be the county clerk at that time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had even applied for the program at Carroll College, which was two years here in Wisconsin, two years in Hawaii. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know that that's the path because <laughs> I'll have to start planning in about yep. eight years. <laughs> yeah. So both you and your husband, Justin, are very involved with a number of different community and volunteer organizations. What compels you to volunteer? So we live in the community and we feel like it's extremely important to give back to the community that we live in and to teach our children to do so as well. Um, It just makes for better humans in the world. I mean, it's important to help others in need and show that to the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. And what organizations are you currently volunteering with? So I am volunteering with the Casa Guadalupe organization. Uh, That's probably the organization that I'm involved in now and have been for the longest time. I started volunteering for their Fiesta Latina event and then was asked to be on their board. And right now I serve as the vice president of their board. And then I also am on the board for the Youth and Family Project. And the most recent board that I started volunteering for was the Tower Heritage Center, which that one is extremely exciting because I do love history. So oh, That's great. And like me, you don't say no to anybody. That needs help. <laughs> no, I, I have a hard time with that. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things when you see somebody needs you, like, yeah. I, can, I can help out here. Here's what I'm going to yep, do. Yep. Get involved. On top of all that, you're a mom. How do you balance all yes. of that? Yeah, I have four kids and I uh, thought to myself, I have no idea how I balance <laughs> it all, but, but I actually do. I have an awesome support system. My husband is absolutely amazing. And no, he did not tell me to say that, <laughs> um, but we are a great team and help each other out because he's also involved in different community organizations. And so we kind of just balance each other out with that. So let's talk about your job for a moment, and I'll start with a question that's likely going to be the title that I put in this episode. Sure. Ashley, what does a county clerk do? Oh, man, that's a tough one because (laughs) every day is different. There are so many different things that even when I ran for office, I had absolutely no idea was all a part of the job. When you think of a clerk or a county clerk or municipal clerk, for that matter, um, you think of meetings and minutes, and so that is a portion of my job, uh, very small portion at times, but I also oversee all of the elections for the county. We issue marriage licenses. We accept passport applications. We handle dog licensing and providing that to the local municipalities. We assist in aiding the municipalities in information regarding annexations. We Oh my gosh, it just (laughs) keeps going on and on. So I, I feel like I could just keep going, but that's the gist of of, the, of what we do, the, yeah. Yeah, so then you have employees that report into you too, is that right? Yes, I do. Um, I have an awesome team. I have three full-time employees and one part-time and one limited time, but we actually have the mail room and printing in our office, mm. so uh, that accounts for one part-time and one full-time employee. So we handle all of that for the county, so central reproductions, printing, and then handling of the mail. And then I also share one position with the county board, which is a legislative clerk position that kind of is the liaison between the county employees and staff and then the elected body of the board. So. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a lot to Hannah. There's what, how many county Four, supervisors are there now? We so, have 21. 21. So right. we had 26 that's and right. we, after the last census, went down to 21. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of, a lot of people to manage and yes. talk to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
this position that you're in is up for re-election every four years then, right? Yes, yes. So, so, um, when you first decided to run, like, what was that decision-making process like? Because it's a lot of work yeah. running for office, especially yeah. countywide. Yes, and I, I had no idea how much work it was at that point in time. I worked at the sheriff's office at the time and was reached out to by two different individuals, one being Josh Oman, the county executive now, and the other being Jay Shambo, the mm -hmm. city administrator for West Bend. And both had thought I would be a great person for that that role. And the prior county clerk actually was retiring at the time. And so I had thought about it. We talked about it, prayed about it. And I realized that I could have taken the easy way, which would have been, you know, nope, I'm happy where I'm at. I love the sheriff's office, loved who I worked with. It was a great experience and that would have been easy. You know, I knew that that was stable and mm -hmm. in a great position for me. But if I never tried, I would always have that in the back of my mind. Like, what if, what could I have brought to the county clerk's office, to the county? What could I have improved upon if I didn't take that leap? And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I did. Well, we're all grateful you yeah. did. <laughs> uh, for a typical spring election like we have now, so the nonpartisan elections, and when there's a primary, when do your election responsibilities start ramping up? So for a year like the one we're in now, so an odd year where there's just the spring election that's guaranteed and then the spring primary if needed, work actually begins probably in October, oh, October wow, okay. and November. So we're in my office, very busy prepping all of the materials and legal notices and information for the local municipalities ahead of the election. And then we collect all of the data from the municipalities. And that's when we start compiling the ballot. And mm -hmm. actually, this is the first year. And actually, the February primary was the first election where I was actually programming the election in house rather than contracting it out with Dominion as we had forever in the mm -hmm. past. So that was something new for this year and a, you know a lot more went into it, but beneficial in itself as well. What do you find to be the most challenging part of being the county clerk? Most challenging probably just dealing with lots and lots of different personalities, you know, we're dealing with elected officials. I I don't actually find it that challenging. I guess it's more of a positive challenge. Okay. I enjoy you know, different things that it, we have to work through or researching statutes and finding fixes. And if you go at everything with a positive attitude, it doesn't, it's not a ne necessarily a negative challenge, but you yeah, can but it's bring out something good from it. Right. Yeah. Problem solving and yes. coming up with solutions. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. What do you love about the position? Probably what you just mentioned, problem solving and uh, making things more efficient. Uh, actually, when I started in planning and parks, that was probably one of my my most favorite things was changing the way things had always been done, which mm -hmm. was a saying or or is still a saying that some people like to say, you know, we've always done it that way. My least favorite saying, because <laughs> you can always change things to make them better and more efficient and things like that, better service for the public. And so that's kind of what I've done along the way, you know, planning a park, sheriff's office, and now in the clerk's office, just doing things either in our office that I have direct control over or working with our state legislators to make changes that make things more efficient for the public. Like we, we worked really hard to have statewide issuance and the ability for couples to apply for a marriage license in and, and any county in the state of Wisconsin rather than the old requirement where you had to apply where you lived. Yeah. So it just, things like that, making things easier, making government work better for the people that we're meant to serve mm -hmm. is, is truly one of my favorite things. That's a really good segue. Um, <laughs> so recently news came out that Washington County will be changing the hours of its clerk register of deeds and County treasurer's offices to 7 a.m. to 5 30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, starting on April 3rd meaning that you guys are closed on Fridays, right? So what yeah. was the reasoning behind the change? So the 410s has actually been something that's been a goal of mine and on my goal board probably since 2017. Our office has been 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's been in our county code. That's how it's been forever, which, you know, maybe was great at one point in time, great hours for employees. However, more and more people being in the workforce and kids being in school you can't get to government offices then without taking off, mm -hmm. you know, taking vacation time. 
which me being a mom, that's hard to do. You don't want to pull your kids out of school. You don't want to waste your vacation time to to have a passport appointment or to stop and pay your taxes or whatever it may be. So we actually did a we did a pilot program last year, but before that, even pre-COVID, I used to offer one evening a week. So it was Thursday nights, I believe. I would work from 4.30 to 7 or something like mm-hmm. that. And people would come from all over. I think at that point it was, we were trying to figure out if people were coming to the Hartford office for the evening hours because of its location and you know being in close proximity, were we better serving the people of that area? so they wouldn't have to come to West Bend. But we realized very, very quickly that people were driving from out of county to come to us because we were the only place that they could apply for a passport Mm -hmm. at night and not have to take vacation if they even were able to. Yeah. So then last summer from June and through the end of September, we offered Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. I had two team members that worked those hours. And actually we saw 43% of all of our appointments before 8.15 and after 3.45. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was pretty significant. And actually uh, someone had reached out on social media asking me how many appointments were on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And I just calculated that, that it was about 13%. So even with us being closed on Fridays, it doesn't have- It was less than the 20% that would have been even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. And And so we even found, too, last summer that people were only coming in on Fridays because we didn't have the capability of serving more in the evening or in the early morning. Um, And I suppose that people would take off on Friday. It's easier probably if they have to take off to go do those things. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it truly has been such a blessing that we're able to offer that better service to the public. And like I mentioned earlier, with couples being able to apply for a marriage license anywhere in the state of Wisconsin— we have couples that come from all over because mm-hmm. they can actually get an appointment with us outside of their normal working hours. Do you put them on the I do wall if they're not from Washington County? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Everybody can yeah. sign the I do wall. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. We've talked about passports, marriage licenses. What other kinds of services are affected by this with the Register of Deeds and the Treasurer's Office sure. as well? Yep. So the treasurer's office paying of taxes, you know, that can actually be done online, but there are still people that can can and want to come into the office. So that's something that can be done outside of normal business hours. In addition to register of deeds and the real property lister, they're able to issue marriage certificates, birth certificates, death certificates, anything with filing of deeds mm-hmm. um, or research regarding properties can be done now outside of normal business hours. Do you foresee other counties or municipalities following your lead here? So as of right now, we're in an 18-month pilot program. I think people are waiting to see how that goes, how the public utilizes the service outside of the normal business hours, or, or maybe we realize that we do need Fridays or later evenings or something like that. I did share the information with all of the counties in Wisconsin, and I did receive several that were curious about what the outcome would be. And I think uh, local municipalities are in that same same position, wanting to see how it goes for us before making any true changes. And again, these go into effect on April 3rd, right? Yes, April 3rd. All right, perfect. Well, Ashley, thank you for coming in. Thanks for all you do. And I will let you go get ready for the election, which is, uh, you know, <laughs> coming up a quick. <laughs> couple of weeks away, but for or like 20 days away from yeah. the day we're recording. But for you, that's not many days. <laughs> no, no, it's coming fast. <laughs> so thanks for all you do. And uh, thanks again for coming yeah. on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you again to Washington County Clerk Ashley Reichert for joining me on today's episode of 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Again, the clerks, Register of Deeds, and County Treasurer's offices will be changing their hours to 7 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, starting April 3rd. But hopefully that means you don't have to take off work to get some work done at the county. That's a win-win if you ask me. You still have an opportunity to help out this show by filling in my listener survey. Go to fuzz.cc slash survey and it will bring up a Google survey. Again, fuzz.cc slash survey will get you to the right place. And for doing so, I'll give you a brand new 15 minutes with Fuzz sticker if you'd like one. And I mean it when I say brand new, they're actually brand new. It's not like I'm giving away old stickers that I've peeled off of things. Though, if you asked me to, I would peel the sticker off my MacBook just for you. 
That will do it for 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Catch all the episodes at 15withfuzz.com and be sure to join me for another new episode next Tuesday and every Tuesday right here on 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Oh, 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 oh,